Good afternoon. How's everybody? Happy Monday. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. How's everybody? How's everybody? This is the day that the Lord has made. Happy Monday, everybody. Let's thank God for this wonderful weather that we're getting here. Um, today is a beautiful day. So if you haven't been outside, let's, you know, go outside and just breathe. And the Bible says, Psalm 150, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. How many of you know he's worthy to be praised? From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, God's name is worthy to be praised. All right. Um, we are going to continue um, with our Lenten meditation. And I'll be following not the meditation so much in the book as the scriptures that are in the book. All right. But before we do that, let me just give some notices and announcements very, very quickly. As you come on, come on, come on. Good to see each and every one of you. Um, thank those of you who join us for worship on Sunday. We are doing a series. And on Sunday, we did Lent, a time for repentance. Next week, we hope to preach from the subject, Lent, a time for renewal. And then we'll do Lent, a time for reconciliation. We'll see what the Lord says. But this season is the season that is most sacred to those of us who are part of Krishnam. It is that time that we walk with our Lord and Savior to Calvary. It's also that time that we renew and recommit our relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, who did so much for us. And we want to make sure that we have in us Jesus, the hope of glory. And so I hope that you will pray each day, do the meditation, spend some time. Some people give up something for Lent just as a way of sacrifice and being closer to God. If you don't want to give up um, something material, I think, well, some people will fast. I will start a fast. I'll let you know. I haven't started yet. Um, probably next week, I'll commence and do the Daniel fast, which will just be um, vegetables and fruits. Um, but it's not just that, but we can also, some people fast from social media. Um, some people fast from using the telephone. Whatever it is that's getting in your way from being in a deeper relationship with him is what we want to put aside. And then not only for Lent, but then to practice it throughout that time. Some people gossip too much. Some people are envious of what someone else has. Whatever it is. Ask God to search you. It's a time to be introspective. Create within me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit in me. All right, so join us for worship. Listen, let's give God praise. I'm in the process of writing my annual report. When I wrote my report last year, 500,000 people had died from COVID. And as I sit down now to write, almost a million people 957,000 people in the United States died as a result of COVID. If you're alive and God has kept you through this season, that's the reason to give God some praise. But we also can give God praise because the numbers have dropped dramatically in New York. Um, the mask mandates have been dropped. They are loosening. Um, the vaccine requirements and the, not the vaccine requirement, you still need to get vaccinated, but the need to show your vaccination card when you go into restaurants is at their discretion. Um, the mask mandate will be um, lessened. And so God is at work. Of course, here at the church, we're going to continue um, all of the COVID restrictions that were in place because we want to make sure that everybody is safe and we'll just continue to watch the data. I'll be meeting with our quarantine return to church committee on Sunday and we'll let you know how we will be moving. But <clears throat> those of you who have been just so afraid of coming out, this is a good time, you know, and then of course you can wear your mask, be social distance, but we know that about 90% of New Yorkers are vaccinated. We know that the transmission rate is at an all time low. That's something to give God praise for. Amen. All right. Meet us on Wednesday for Bible study. 
thank those of you who prayed for me and were with us as we went to Jamaica to say goodbye to my wife's uncle, who was like a dad to her on, on last week. Um, so thank you for that. Um, but we're going to try to get, get back to our schedule. So Bible study this, this Wednesday, meet me at um, 7 o'clock for our Bible study. Meet me on Sunday for our worship experience. Uh, we will have a meeting of the Executive Committee of the Missionary Society virtually on this Saturday. Let me go ahead and greet some of you um, as you have come on. And then we're going to go right into this word. Sister Marva Harding, how are you? Sister Ruby Ramsey, how are you? Valerie, Minister Valerie Ellis, how are you? Sister Deborah Dunham, good to see you. Brenda Lee, my sister. Angela Thornton, how are you? Wanda. Roberts, how are you? Patricia Franklin, good to see you. Emma Jean Brown, Carmen, my running partner. Are we going to run tomorrow? The weather is much better. I'm going to give you a shout out in a little while. Sister Virginia Chainer, good to see each and every one of you. Sister Mary Lawrence, Sister Natalie Crawford, thank you. Sister Anza Kelly, how are you? Good to see Sister Brother Leroy, that's my cousin. Sister Cora Powell, good to see all of you. Let's go right now to the word. I'm going to put, um, let's see, um, well, we're going to look at our meditation today comes out of the gospel according to St. Luke. So we'll be looking at St. Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 4, okay? St. Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. When we look, this pericope of scripture is the temptation of Jesus. And you need to know that not all temptation is of the devil. Okay. Um, sometimes God allows the adversary to do certain things. I mean, I should put it differently. Not all wilderness experiences come as a result of the devil. And God sometimes will allow the devil to tempt us to see if God can trust us. So you may be going through something, but just know that it's just a setup for a blessing. Here it is now. When we look in Mark's gospel, um, we know that Jesus had just been baptized and God had spoken, the heavens opened, and God spoke and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And God commended, affirmed Jesus and Jesus was at a mountaintop experience. And right after that, sometimes when you're near a mountaintop experience, that's when the adversary will show up. And that's why you need to be close to Jesus. That's why during this season, we must walk with him and allow him to be in us the hope of glory. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And the Bible says, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan where he was baptized and was led by the spirit into the wilderness. God led him into the wilderness where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days and at the end of them, he was hungry. My brothers and sisters, this pandemic season has been a kind of wilderness experience that we've been led into the wilderness. And I think that God is just trying to set us up for a blessing. God wants to open up a door for somebody, wants to make a way for somebody. And he wants to know, can you trust? Can he trust you? Because you can surely trust him. The Bible says, after 40 days, Jesus had eaten nothing. He had fasted for 40 days. And you know, when you're trying to get closer to the Lord, when you're trying to do things for God, and when you're in a wilderness experience, and when the devil finds you in a weak state, that's when he will tempt you at your weakest point. Here it is. The devil said to him, if you are the son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Now use the preposition if, but God had just said to Jesus after the baptism, you are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Look, you've got to know who you are in Christ. 
Don't let anybody try to trick you, try to set you up. That's what the devil does. He tries to deceive you. But now we the sons and daughters of God, and it does not yet appear what it shall be. But when he shall appear, we shall be like him. What is man that God is mindful of him? So I made. Thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. You are God's child. I am God's child. And so because you know who you are, you don't have to prove anything to the adversary. You don't have to prove anything to people. You just have to be who you are in Christ. Let me conclude. So Jesus didn't fall for the rope of dope. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone. The devil was trying to trick him with material things. Of course he was hungry, but Jesus will be bread when you're hungry. He'll be water when you're thirsty. He'll be a healer when you get sick. He'll be joy in the midst of sorrow. And whatever God has for you is for you. Some people are so busy struggling, trying to make as much money as they can that they won't take time to worship and praise God. They don't understand that the earth is the Lord's in the fullness thereof. We're understanding that now as we're in this tension with Russia and gas prices are going up because so many people are dependent on their vehicles over against being dependent on the things that God has given us. When I park my car here at the church, I walk everywhere, unless I'm going a distance. We can't be dependent on human beings and on people, but we have to be dependent on God. Well, we're gonna stop there. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, we thank you in the words of Mahalia Jackson for how you brought us, for how you kept us, for the fact that you never left us. Now, God, I ask a special blessing upon each person that thought it not robbed. We spend this time in meditation and study of your word. Help us to hide your word in our hearts that we might not sin against you. Now, oh God, help us to have just a closer walk with you that as the apostle Paul declares to the church at Philippi, that we might know you and the power of your resurrection being made conformable unto your suffering. Because if we understand you and the power of your resurrection, then we can handle any crisis, any wilderness experience that may come towards us. Because the word reminds us that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us but we recognize that we can't have resurrection until we go through the wilderness. Hear our prayer and I incline your ear to us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, God bless you. I think I saw my, my friend Terry Terrell. Um, let me see. I'm still sometimes trying to learn how to negotiate some of this technology. Um, I think I saw her. Yeah, first thing, me, my husband, our babies to get in all praise. That well, thank you, Terrell, for checking in. Good to see you. Um, my friend Terrence Broxton, good to see you. Um, some others of you that came on since I was on, I'm glad to see you. Um, let's see, um, Sister Shirley Millard, Sister Maxine, good to see you. Florentia, thank you. Thank you for your inspirational word. Brother Birchwood, how are you? Thank you so much. I look to see you soon. Look to see you soon. All right. God bless each and everyone. You know, we try to do this in 15 minutes. We had 14 minutes and 10 seconds. Let me give the benediction and you have a wonderful day. Know that God loves you and so do I. And I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same station. Now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, to him be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. God bless you. Take care.
All right.